What's good? It's Devonte from Devonte's Paradise. Man, we got a better laptop, we got better sound, and we got better quality. So these brief intros are going to be definitely better for y'all. As y'all see, we got on the screen your boy Pusha T. Now, Pusha T comes from the clips. And that's from Pharrell and them producing helping him out back in the early 2000s. Uh, he got he got features from a wide variety of artists way back when, such as uh, John Legend. He's worked with Justin Timberlake. <laughs> he's worked with Pharrell. So he's a very weird legend at this point. Um, what I hate about the whole Pusha T market and brand is he doesn't drop enough music on his albums. He he gets incredibly marginal marginalized. And he just to me he doesn't do enough. Cause I think just Pusha T can go in on anything. Plus you're under Kanye West. You're under good music. I don't understand why you're not dropping more albums, you know, and more consistently. But, you know, it is what it is. Pusha T's dropping music, so that's good. Let's go over his first album. My name is my name. Now, the features is Chris Brown, Kanye West, Rick Ross, Ab Leva, The Dream, Kevin Costum, Jeezy, Kelly Rowland, Two Chains, Big Sean, Kendrick Lamar, Future, and Pharrell. Now, what was the single? Oh, I remember one time I was in a car and I heard the Let Me Love You song. And um, he sounds just like Mace. Even though I've rarely heard Mace, I've heard I heard a couple singles. I'm a 90s baby, early 90s baby. I've heard some singles. We all used to listen to music at when we was kids. And... Um, I don't think there's any real future features on here. He was just working with he's working with artists who he kind of wanted to deal with at the time that were popping and just see tried to see what was work would work, you know. And, oh, before I forget, um during the clips fame, um Pusha T had this issue with Lil Wayne and I don't know if a lot of people know this is because um Little Wayne, Pusha T is under the impression that Little Wayne stole his style, and it, you know, it Pusha T didn't like that. So th I think that's what it's really about. Just the fact that Pusha T feels that Little Wayne stole his style. Now, is that true? It's possible. It's possible two artists came up at the same time and, you know, Lil Wayne got his style and ran with it. I, I think it's definitely possible. And then we're going to go into how Pusha T and Drake beefed, got into a beef. We got to wait till the album comes out. The album comes up first. But let's go into the King Bush. King Push. Um, just in case y'all didn't know. That's where the little little Wayne Pusha T beef stems from. Now, Pusha T drops his second album, King Push. Dope ass album. Anything he drops is dope. Um, let's go over the features. We got Dream, Kanye West, ASAP Rocky, The Dream, Ab Leva, Beanie Siegel, Kaylani, Jill Scott. I had a song with Designer and Ty Dolla Signs. Now, MPA, I think MPA is a single. Uh, this is supposed to be a prelude to the actual King Push album. The King Push album never came out. So, pretty dope album. Pretty short, pretty to the point. So now we got, yeah, now we got Daytona. So, Kanye West. Um, how am I going to start this? Kanye West, 
Kanye West basically broke down. This is how it all started. Kanye West broke down. Um, he was having issues with Beyonce and Jay-Z because allegedly Beyonce and Jay-Z, uh, he felt slighted by those two. And the life of Pablo was coming out. And Jay-Z was dropping his new streaming platform called Tidal at the time. And the life of Pablo was only exclusive to Tidal. The problem with that is Kanye West lost a lot of money, allegedly, in the deal. And he felt slighted. He felt slighted. He felt slighted towards it. And there was this controversy, allegedly, where Beyonce dropped her Beyonce album. And uh, she did the same thing that Kanye kind of did with My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy. This is stemming way back from 2012, 2013. That, that type of era. And this is this is alleged. This is what I'm hearing. This is what I'm hearing. This isn't, I don't know if this is true, but um somebody in the camp basically said that that was a bad idea, or Beyonce, Jay-Z themselves allegedly said that was a bad idea. Then again, Beyonce drop does the same thing Kanye did on wanted to do on my beautiful dark twisted fantasy, or did. Um, so there was some animosity stemming from that. And then the title situation, um, you add all that together. And then the fact that Kim Kardashian allegedly got robbed. Uh, Kanye West lost, lost his mind. And after that, Beyonce, Beyonce decided that I don't want to deal with him no more. And Kim Kim Kardashian and them and them and that. To, to, for me personally, even if I become famous, God uh, strike me dead, um, I feel like Beyonce is being a little too harsh. I, I honestly feel like Beyonce is being a little too harsh on the situation. Kanye West has lost a lot. I, I just think Beyonce is not being understanding enough, if this is all true. Um I, I think Kanye, I think Beyonce and Kanye should talk, to be honest with you. <laughs> but man, I'm I'm going way off subject, but this is gonna get straight, this is gonna get straight back to Pusha T, right? So Kanye, Kim Kardashian allegedly got robbed. Kanye left the concert, spazzed out, lost a bunch of money, whatever, whatever. He started spazzing out more and more and more. He was worried about his wife. I mean, a guy lost his mom. I know how it feels to lose your mom. It's a, it's a terrible thing. Terrible. It's a, it's a terrible feeling. And he just, he lost his mind. Um, he ended up going to rehab, going to recovery. He dropped the, the Yay album. Um, yeah, after he spazzed, he dissed everybody. DJ Khaled, Drake, Hove. They didn't. They didn't like. They didn't like that. Which again, I think is selfish because Kanye has done a lot for y'all. Y'all could talk it over, but again, you know, petty people are gonna be petty. Whatever. Um. You know, Kanye. Kanye went on this new. This new vibe, right? So he drops the Yay. He's dropping the Yay album, but at the same time. He's also, um, he's also dropping five albums at once. Each of these albums have eight tracks. So he decides to drop, he, I think he dropped his album first. I don't know the exact order, but he dropped and he all produ he produced these he produced these tracks by the way. Yay. Yay by Yay by Kanye. Daytona by Pusha T. KTSC by T Tiana Taylor. Kid C Ghost with Kanye West and Kid Cudi. And then he dropped Nas album. Which we were all fucking all hip hop heads was waiting for. And they were all seven to eight tracks. So, 
Now we get back to Pusha T, right? So Pusha T drops Daytona, and everybody's talking about infrared, 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 infrared. And they're saying that Pusha T is dissing Drake. I mean, it would make sense. Drake is Lil Wayne's right-hand man. So sometimes you gotta, you gotta be aware of who you associate yourself with. But, you know, the chips fall where they may. Um, infrared, infrared, infrared kept coming up. Pusha T, this and Drake, Pusha T, this and Drake. And I don't, something else might have happened, I don't remember. But Drake dropped the Duppy freestyle. And when I heard that, I was like, oh, this motherfucker killed Pusha T, right? So we're waiting, we're waiting, we're waiting. And Pusha T dropped the story of Adidon. Now, that shit was, that shit was, that shit was rough. But Pusha T, Pusha T delivered. And I kind of say this with, with the Eminem and MGK beef. You know, Eminem's a legend. Pusha T's a legend, right? More of a legend than Drake is. I don't care what you guys say. Pusha T is a legend. This nigga worked with Justin Timberlake way back in fucking 04, 05. He's, he's been in the game for a while. He's worked with Nelly, all those people. So, E-40 and them. So, when you're a legend, you got, you got to hit that motherfucker hard. And that's what I say with the Eminem and AG, MGK beef. Eminem, to me personally, Eminem did not, did not hit MGK hard enough. He didn't. You know, I'll talk about that later in the MGK beef. I'll, I'll, that's another video. I'll, I'll go more into it. But um, long story short, he delivered, right? And all these soft-ass men are saying, Pusha T went too far. Pusha T went too far. Pusha T did not go too fucking far. And all the men are saying that, I'm sorry, but y'all niggas are soft. Y'all niggas are soft as fuck. Pusha T got him, man. And for me personally, to be honest, I don't think Drake could go toe to toe with Pusha T. I don't think he could. You know, all these excuses come in. And again, if I become famous and I end up meeting these people, um, I'm going to tell them how I feel. But this is coming from a hip hop stand position. Pusha T killed that man, man. And Pusha T would have been ready too. Same thing with MGK. You know, so Daytona did what it did, and um, everybody's like Drake. Well, Pusha T went too far. Pusha T, and then and then Drake dropped Scorpion, and then they're like, yeah, he killed Pusha T, and this and this and that. I'm like, no, he didn't. Drake didn't do shit to Pusha T. You know, Pusha T's in his own lane. Drake's in his own lane, but Pusha T killed him, man. So, let's go over the features. We got Rick Ross, Kanye, and Hov. And that's it. Now, it's funny because I think I talked about this on a Rick Ross, a brief intro when I went on a rant. Um, Rick Ross tried to get Pusha T and Lil Wayne on Maybach Music 6. He was just trying to get them to squash the beef. But, you know... Uh, you know, and again, I probably get people in the comment section saying, oh, you're a Pusha T fan and this and this and that. I'm like, no, I'm not a fan of anybody. I'm a hip hop fan. Hip hop stan, whatever you said, but I, I don't I don't worship or idol anything. I idolize myself, to be honest with you. You know, so. With that being said, um, I'm waiting for the next Pusha T album. Let me let me let me know what you guys think about Pusha T. Anyway, peace.